Well, you might be thinking this is a very hard question to answer. Well, let's see what Jewish literature says on this. Now, first I'd like to propose another question. We all know that our fate is sealed between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. The Talmud says that all our sustenance is decided by God between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Rosh Hashanah we are written and Yom Kippur we are sealed. Actually not only sustenance but anything that will transpire to us throughout the year is decided on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. That's why all the prayers of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are all about asking God for a good and sweet year. So the question is, if our faith is sealed on Yom Kippur, why do we pray throughout the year, three times a day, asking God for all the things that we wish for? What's the purpose? Isn't everything sealed on Yom Kippur? Now to answer this, um, we need to uh, talk a little Kabbalah. So please bear with me. According to the Kabbalah, on Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, there issues from the infinite God a spiritual energy that is supposed to sustain the whole world and every individual. But at that state, it is a spiritual energy which transcends anything physical. It hasn't yet been translated into physical needs like health, livelihood, children, sustenance. What needs to happen now is, after Yom Kippur, that spiritual blessing and energy that has been allotted to the whole world and to each individual needs to be converted into a physical material blessing. Now for that to happen, according to Kabbalah, this spiritual energy needs to go through a chain of descents and concealments, needs to go through many, many levels of spiritual worlds and chambers. And at each level, it takes on the identity of that spiritual level until finally it comes down to our material physical world and takes on the identity of something positive that we can appreciate in this physical world. Now, this also explains why in another place in the Talmud it says that we are judged every single day, not only in Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Because in Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, we are, we are sealed for the spiritual energy. But for that spiritual energy to be converted into physical blessings, we are judged every single day. Are we worthy for that spiritual energy to be converted down and become a material blessing? Now, this also explains why we need to pray every day. Because if it's in a spiritual state, we don't benefit from it in this material world. So we need to pray every day and ask Hashem that that blessing, that energy that you allotted for us on Yom Kippur should be converted down into this world and we should see it and feel it and appreciate it and benefit from it. So based on that, we can understand a little bit more about why some prayers are unanswered or appear to be unanswered. One answer, based on what we explained, is that not necessarily we are not being answered. There's, a, there's not necessarily a lack of a response, but there might be a delay in the response. Actually, the Medrash says there are some prayers that are answered only after 40 days. Like Moses, after the golden calf, he prayed for the Jews for, for forgiveness, and he was only granted forgiveness only after 40 days of praying. And this is Moses. The Medrash continues and says that some prayers are only answered after three weeks, like the case of Daniel, when Cyrus uh, halted the building of the second temple. 
So Daniel fasted for three weeks that he should resume the building of the temple. And only after three weeks, he had a vision that God said, your, answer, your, your prayers have been answered. And the, the, uh, the Medrash continues and says that there are some prayers that are answered immediately. Like the very famous example of Elijah in Mount Carmel, where the fire came down and consumed his offering immediately. So sometimes there's a delay in the response because since the spiritual energy has to convert into a material blessing and has to go through this chain of descents and going through all these different levels, each it, it takes time. And sometimes on one day we're not worthy for it to be converted to a material blessing. And sometimes one prayer is not enough. One prayer might bring it from one spiritual level to the next spiritual level. We need another prayer to bring it down to a lower spiritual level. And maybe another prayer, maybe a hundred prayers till it comes down to our physical world. So not necessarily our prayers are not answered. It might mean we need to pray a bit more till our prayers are answered. But even when we don't see our prayers being answered, Nevertheless, that allotment, that spiritual allotment that was decided for us on Yom Kippur is still ours. We, we receive it in the afterlife in Gan Eden. But there's a second answer based on this explanation that we can only be answered for a blessing that has already been allotted to us on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. But what happens if on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, that blessing wasn't allotted to us, even in the spiritual realms? So prayer won't help after Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur to convert from the spiritual realm to the physical realm, because even in the spiritual realm, there is no allotment for us. But that begs another question. Does that mean that if we missed out on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, it's too late. We can't ask for God now for blessings. So the answer is yes. We can still elicit God's blessing even if there was no allotment made for us in Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. But that you need a special type of prayer. If you look through many of the uh, prayers, there is an expression used, Yehiratzon, may it be God's will. In other words, there are certain prayers that we can elicit a new will from God that wasn't decided for us in Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. But to elicit such a new, a new will, we need to have a very special prayer. It's, it's not on one foot, so it's very hard to explain this in detail in this short video, but briefly, a prayer to elicit a new will from God needs to come from the depths and the core of our soul where we become completely dependent on God. We surrender completely to God. See, naturally we feel independent from God. Naturally we look for natural means to help ourselves. We look, we turn to doctors and to every other force, natural force to help us, which the Torah says we should. But we have to still believe at the same time that really everything is coming from God. These are just tools uh, uh, that God uses to bring the blessing to us. So in our prayer, we must completely surrender our ego, our independence on ourselves or anything, any other force and completely put our, our life in God's hands and saying, it's all up to you. Now that's a very, very, very high standard highly uh, spiritual state of mind. But if we can reach that, that can break all barriers. And so to speak, God also breaks his system and he will grant a new will for you and for us and answer our prayers. So based on this explanation, how come sometimes those prayers also are not answered? or appear not to be answered. So the answer to that is that every single prayer is actually answered in some way or another. A 
classic example is that Moses prayed to enter the land of Israel. He prayed 515 times. It didn't help. But God still granted him to go up on the mountain and to see Israel from a distance. According to the Medrash, he also showed Moses everything that will transpire the Jewish people till the times of Mashiach. So even though his uh, prayer wasn't fully answered, but it was some way answered. And therefore, we believe that every prayer we make, especially prayers of uh, when we completely surrender ourselves, as explained before, Hashem answers them in some way or another. We don't always see how this prayer are answered, but in some way or another, this prayer is answered. It's also important to point out that when it appears that our, our prayers are not answered, it doesn't mean that God is not listening. God listens to every single prayer. Sometimes the answer is yes, but sometimes the answer is no, or not the way you want it. I'll answer it in another way or partially. And finally, we must conclude with this very important point that prayer is not only about supplication. It's not only about getting stuff, even though that's a very important part of ritual prayer in Judaism. We are, Hashem wants us to ask for stuff, but that's only one part of prayer. Primarily, prayer is connection. The word for prayer in Hebrew is tefillah, which means to connect. Every time we pray, there is value and meaning in the, in the act itself. We are connecting to God. We are becoming closer to God. We are having a meeting with God. And that in and itself is valuable enough to make prayer meaningful. Thank you.